I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man, this sucks. Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Souls podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Edward. What's up, dude? You have found us somebody again. Someone, uh, a funny somebody, another great comedian that embodies what he, we here at the working class holes attitude wise, <laughs> what we embody. It. <laughs> it's an embodiment. <laughs> this guy's an amazing podcast called Troublemakers, Pro- Troublemakers Podcast. He's very funny right out of Pittsburgh. Give it up for the one and only Ray Zawadny. Hello. Hey, fellas. What's up, buddy? Thank you for having me. Hey, what was me? the other podcast? Uh, being jerks? Through. Brand new jerks. Brand new yeah. jerks. Is it yeah. a brand new show or you've had it? I um, had it for about a year. Okay. Uh, I do that with uh, Sean Donnelly. And then uh, Troublemakers I do with uh, my buddy Dylan Krasinski. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, they're I, great. The uh, the Both of them are fantastic. Yeah. I, I really get a kick out of uh, the one with you and Sean, though, because uh, it's just... Sean is so uh, like straight. He's the straight man. <laughs> You're just yeah. skewering like just he's. If you could call it a straight man, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just insane. So it's you know, but it's just it's just uh, it's just too um, mentally disturbed people talking for an hour every week. That's basically what it is. Yeah, I saw some of those clips. Really mentally funny. ill. Yeah, that's what Ed was like, hey, I, it's my buddy Ray. It's a really funny <laughs> podcast. Look at this. I was, it was pretty funny. Oh hell yeah! Thank you, Ray. What is your worst job? Dude, that's such a hard question because I've had so many bad jobs. I, I've, dude, I've had like, I'm 34. I've had like 20 jobs in my life, maybe more. That's a hard life. And most comedians I know that yeah. are really the true essence of comedians have had a number of jobs. But I <laughs> they could not keep. I would say my worst job is a tie between two. And it would be when I was, when I first moved to New York, I was working a temp job where I was a janitor at Ooh. a church. Ooh. Uh semi haunted church. Ooh. And then the uh the other one was the first job that I ever had, which I was a um I was a dishwasher when I was like fourteen. Ed, I like to start with the haunted church. Dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so I am a as a kid, I remember them telling me like you would see ghosts all the time. You would legit come from a room and say hey this old man is asking about this and it would be like a dead you guy would see that when i was like four, three or four years old and now like i don't have that kind of shit anymore but i do feel like weird shit around me dude a lot. it's probably in you though yeah you could probably seriously. unlock that so <laughs> i'm serious i mean yeah. if i can make a fucking mo- some money if that, if that gets me to finally sell a ticket ed i will be the clairvoyant comic i don't give a fuck fucking capitalism <laughs> You know I what need I mean? to like, sell like, a ticket. I, I, just, I just said that you could potentially have the power to speak with the dead, and you're like, how much fucking money well, can I, I make? <laughs> I, can I go viral doing this? Currently, Ray, I have the power to spark an involuntary response, but so far in the 16 years, no club will fucking book me. So if I can be a clairvoyant and get the booking, fuck it. Who am I? I'm a whore. My moral compass is out the fucking window, and I hit 40. It's over for me. I love that everybody's coming to see a medium, and then you just get up there. It's like uh, sex when you're married. Yeah. I'm gonna literally just do my act, <laughs> and they're like, "Is this guy gonna fucking say anything about ghosts?" I and they take photos of me, and they'll be orbs and shit yes. in the photos, yes. and then that's your gift. Like, take a picture with me, and your dead family members' orbs will be in it with you. It's just a filter. You're telling me these religious fanatics aren't fucking flocking to see Josh Ricardo's clairvoyant comedy show? They are, Ed. And if you're lucky, you'd open for me. You fuck. <laughs> You want your end on this one? Get in, sweetheart. Take the photo, buy the merch. Two t-shirts you gotta buy. Ed goes up first, and he's a magician, but doesn't do any magic also. Magically make your expired food from your refrigerator disappear. Ed McGowan. He, 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 he wheels out a trunk and a bunch of merch. He's dressed like a magician. Never touches anything. And he's, I'm, I'm, People are coming to that. What's I mean, the deal with airline food? That's crazy. It's quiet, and then I just have like a little boo-like sound effect. Like, ooh. <laughs> you feel the presence. <laughs> what? Okay, so you are a janitor in a church. I had a buddy who was a janitor, and he used to do some weird stuff, but it wasn't at a church. I feel like being a janitor is you, you're alone 
yeah. the whole so, time. So here's the thing: is it was a, uh, it's it's in Brooklyn Heights, and it's a it's a pretty famous church. Uh, not famous enough for me to remember the name right offhand, but. Uh, it, it's I a, think there's zealots out there, like religious zealots, that are like, "Did you ever worship at the Brooklyn Zionist Church?" Like, do you know, like, <laughs> well, the Madison Square of, Garden? <laughs> 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 uh, you ever play that one on Brooklyn Heights? That's a good room. That's a good <laughs> room. <laughs> We're gonna be getting right into from like ghost hunters, like, dude, you don't know what kind of church this is. This was the uh, fucking Zion. Yeah, right. The oh, Baptist. Man, what, what kind? Was it a Catholic church? I can't remember the or name. Or like a like a Presbyterian. Um, I think it was Catholic. So it was half church, and it's half like this beautiful. History historic church and actually this building was a safe haven for the underground railroad oh was, like you could see like the catacombs under underneath oh wow like, you could go in there and walk through but the other half was this like fancy schmancy day uh school for children like really young kids like almost like a daycare type mm -hmm. but it was it was one of those like they're in the orange room today where the energy is, uh, you know, like so a really woo woo. Yeah, woo. what is that called? That's like a Montessori or something like that? Like a Montessori school? You mm. know what I'm talking about? I, I'm not sure. No, this, this, it was like, like a, really uh, rich kids go yes, there. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 very yeah, yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like Adam Driver's daughter right. goes uh, there. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember, uh, like, I would have to be around these, like, like kids. And then the other half of the day, which I liked, was being in the church because that was quiet. And, uh, but the, it's weird that like I didn't have any vetting to be around children. Right. I mean, I'm fine. You know, I'm fine. You know, I have nieces. No, no, that you bring up a valid like, point. They let anybody work with children. They let anybody work. No with one children. wants to do it, especially rich children. Which oh, is like, yeah. Who, like, like, don't you think Adam Driver would be like, why the fuck is? Yeah, who is this, oh, no, this no, fucking his guy? Probably would, or is the caretakers probably would be annoying. Yeah. Well, uh, when you're that big, is it him showing up? He did show up once, but I wasn't there. Oh. Not that I give a shit. I saw Ad Rock at one of those schools. There was one of those schools near a job I had. And, oh, really? And um, he was dropping his kid off, and I was just like, fucking Beastie Boys. Dude. Yeah, There's a awesome. fucking Beastie Boy right there, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the I walked past one of these kids, and... Uh, I was walking down and he was uh, like down the steps to go fucking like clean a toilet. So I'm already not in a good mood. And he goes, hi, fat man. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I look at the teacher and she just like smiles and I'm like, what's so gonna, funny? You're not going to say anything to this kid? You're not going to say anything to this fucking little asshole? I need this fourteen dollars an hour, so I can't say anything to him right now. Or I'm gonna hey, what's get the code for like a overflow toilet? They just say get down to the toilet um i didn't do that kind of stuff oh, 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 oh. Like, like because i, I was i thought you were like, literally on the way for like an overflow toilet job i was on the way to just clean the bathroom oh, oh, oh okay so if there was anything yeah i don't know that they have codes I, do, do they have codes? Because I was a janitor too. I don't, we should just go no, clean the fucking shit, toilet. Dude, it's like a yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah, hey, bro. Man, it's like I'm at a yeah, meeting. Dude. You know, you weigh around a, a mop bucket, man. <laughs> hey, brother. You want to talk wax, dude? I'll, I'll, I'll talk Murphy's oil soap all day with you, buddy. <laughs> but like, it was like it was just it was just boring as hell. Uh -huh. And the the dude was the first boss was an asshole. Uh, they also called the job a porter. Oh. oh yeah, that's like the fancy Don't janitor. Me. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'd rather right, be right. called a janitor than a porter. Yeah, porter. Wouldn't you? We used to say custodial engineer. <laughs> <laughs> or custodian. You know what they call? We called our janitor custodian Nick. Custodian. It made Nick? him sound more efficient, but the dude was just clean and piss and. And that was in your school. That was in my elementary. We called the him custodian. Custodian Nick. Nick. Yeah. You and you can also like like there were certain teachers there that treated me like shit, uh -huh. and then certain teachers that were like really cool to me and nice. And like I think that that is how you could tell how good of a person is. Oh, oh yeah, is how they treat the fucking help. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. When you have a job like that where you know everyone, like that's the punchline of every single you failed in life joke. Yeah, you know, it's like you you'll be a janitor, and people don't realize they're janitors that make six figures. Oh, I mean, that's like a yeah. if you get into the right scenario. You could make some money as a janitor. Not, it's a great job, yeah. but it's a very like lucrative working class job if you stay in it for twenty years and become head janitor of oh, some college. It's a, it's a union thing. It's a union too. job. Yeah, like and the guy, the place wouldn't survive. The one guy that I worked there was like a full time employee. Um, he was this dude named Donald, fucking coolest guy ever. Super talented too, like a poet. Oh. He could play the piano beautifully. He would just but, randomly like be we said, it. can't make any money at it, so it, he has to go be a fucking janitor. That's like, where I'm about to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm at. 
I, I can't. Just, I don't pay to see my show, so I'm really close to going. To, hey, Ray, do you have to hook up for that guy at that school? Yeah, so I can get some staffing. mentorship. <laughs> but but he played like the piano beautifully. He was like he was like uh, Goodwill Hunting almost. Oh wow! But he uh, he had the super deep voice. The one thing about him that was really funny though is like I don't think he's ever left Brooklyn. He's an old dude, um, and I love those kind of guys. Would, he would be super impressed or hyped up on something that has been around forever that everybody knows about you know what i'm saying he would be like now i just watched this show last night that was absolutely hilarious have you ever heard of the office (laughs) it's like yeah dong 2022 yeah buddy hey it's been out for like 17 years now He's like, oh, my favorite whiskey. Now, I don't know if you ever heard of this. Jameson. <laughs> yeah, dude. Out for 200 years. Not only am I an alcoholic, <laughs> but I think everybody knows about that. What are we doing? I love it. But he ripped. Wait, wait. wait so cool. Those guys always, I worked with a guy who looked. 70 but was probably about 50 right navy yep. dude car dog it was when i was selling used cars called him a car dog face like a fucking catcher's mitt just grits all just one grit after another and he was just smoking in the room you weren't allowed to do this then it was 2005 you still you had to smoke he was in the fucking room with me Love taking it. calls that's one great. time him and i got in almost a fist fight because he was mad that i they have a system where he was trying to he saw i was hot this is what's crazy about selling used like shitty cars it really is about the performance more so than the automobile i'm sure so they're buying they really are buying you oh right so yeah, yeah, yeah. they call it getting hot right so what uh, happens is they'll you know guys like him who they're not charming and they're ugly they look for the hot car salesman on that weekend just saturday and then he'll pass a, if he's not getting anywhere with a walk up he'll tag me in to close it after I'm already on a closed deal. He'll just sit through my closed deal during the paperwork so I could go seal his deal. And then we have to share the commissions. Interesting. So he was doing that to me. And I said, dude, don't fucking tag me in again on one of your... You literally didn't sit with those people longer than two minutes you tagged me in. Oh. Because he wants me to seal the deal. But now, wait a second. Would you have missed them anyway? Would Are you getting like an extra well, half a commission? I, well, or? no, the, the deal is this, though. Like, I'm engaging now with his shit, and he's taking all the walk-ins and then uh, tagging me in. Oh, So now like we're a rotation, team instead of, of me making yeah. my full commission. Because if he just missed his his thing, the next guy is up. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah next yeah, dude's right. up. So yeah, he lost his spot. As long as he tags me in, so they still are So now he's ta- basically taking one of your spots. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. So him and I... He was really frail, but he was like this Navy dude who, who like worked in the submarine. Oh shit! He literally took his wife from the Philippines to marry here, who he met in one of the Hell Filipino yeah, whorehouses. Uh huh. And he used to say that the Filipino women would ask him to try out the new girls because he was as thick as a coke can. Per him, this is. <laughs> That, hey, buddy, prove it. <laughs> That's a great. Let me that see. That was like it. the first like day on the job. Conversation. Yeah, yeah That's right. The first thing he told me on the job when I met him. That's why That's Mike Chickatelli was his name. He slams down a can of Pepsi as he's telling the story. Yeah. Mike, and he was spiking his shit. He would come in with his Irish whiskeys. That motherfucker was a dirtbag. So, him and I almost get in a fight, and I go, "Listen, dude, I'm not your. I'm not going to punch you, because we're you know we're working." Yeah. And you're old, dude. I'm not gonna punch you. So if you don't leave me alone, like we're gonna go outside, we're gonna fight. I'm not gonna fight here in the showroom with you. And he got really upset. He like, I think he was trying to intimidate me. I was pretty young. I was still like 20. I was like 22. And when the phone rang, because that's how you get your leads. Oh, yeah. okay. And you would whoever answers the phone first gets the thing. Oh, right. And we okay. had a phone on each of our desks. He wanted to answer the phone so bad when it rang that before me because I always would smoke this dude, right? He had arthritis. Like, he's not beating me to the phone. <laughs> yeah, right. And he had that big fucking Coke can. Yeah, and then his him dick back. is totally too heavy to anchoring move. him to the floor. What yeah. is he going to do? So he swung so, f- like, he had that arthritis brace that your grandmother would wear. Uh. And he smashed his phone <laughs> across the fucking showroom. But that's the kind of dude that Donald guy reminds me of. 
<laughs> no, no, no. No, well, first of all, I bet Donald had a fucking piece oh, no. on it. Oh, oh, I bet Donald. Sure. Oh, Donald's like a guy that could wreck you because he, he was so like he humble. A, he had a deep voice. But no, he was like a smaller... Oh, even his dick. Yeah. Even he had a weapon. That cocaine no, was no, more like a Jameson dude. bottle, really. No, we're talking about penises. Here. Oh, I didn't know you were going... Oh, and, awesome. Uh, no, but he was he was a really sweet, nice guy. Mm-hmm. But he was, just, he was just a hard-ass worker. And like nothing pissed him off. Like that, the bosses would do or say, and like he just like took it, and it's just, just really in the moment. Yeah. I have to say, like being a janitor, because I was a janitor when I was in high school, at my high school, <laughs> which was but the oh, some of my favorite it was, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't great for a sex life. I wasn't uh, cool. <laughs> How does that even work? <laughs> yeah, after school. I that is go- the worst work study program of all time. So where am I going? Staying right here. <laughs> I worked there on the summers, dude. Oh, okay. And like, and, and, the, no, and during was, school yeah, hours. During school, yeah. Dude, that is fucking humiliating. They didn't even give them a real diploma. <laughs> Janitorial. <laughs> <laughs> they just handed me a mop bucket. You did well. You did well. A Four gold years. mop. Solid. Jesus. Solid. But the solid... <laughs> Being alone uh, at a, as a janitor is like totally. It's like a zen kind of thing. Like I used to love it. Like just you would go up. Like and but you were th- also really into weed and yeah. Drugs we just and go shit. up to the third floor and Smoke just hide weed, out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with like the you know it's and then the other That's thing the is proof like that we can make anything better. You can cheat at janitorial though. Yeah, you can cheat so at every easily. Job. Cheating at janitorial is so easy, though. Like, yeah, in what vacuum. sense is cheating though? Not cleaning? Yeah, not cleaning. Ugh. Yeah, you could just half-ass clean. Yeah. Ugh. Sometimes I would be like, I'm going down to clean the bathroom, and then I would just go sit in the bathroom and play on my phone. Yeah. Oh yeah, I used to take naps in the bathroom. Oh, you know, sitting on the toilet. I used to do that too, and I was I was a method slacker where I would still pull my pants all the way down around my ankle to make sure people just saw. Just in case somebody looked. No, I do yeah, that too. But I think I'd rate a sociopath up and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping with your pants down is insane. I know your, at, your bare you ass is still to. touching the fucking bowl. It's I was I was the Daniel Day Lewis of slacking. I just I, I got into character to pretend like I was taking a shit. Dude, give me some more of these. This is great. What what's some other shit? What did I used to do to really slack? Do you ever sleep at your desk? Well, I'm an office guy, so right. uh, he's like the grunt of the show, and I'm like the guy that does the grunt office job at, yeah. at the desk, you know, with the wrinkled fucking button up and the shitty slacks that I change in my truck to go to the job to do. And I would sleep because your cubicle, they couldn't see over it or this way. I would <laughs> do this with my eyes closed while working so I could sleep sitting in my chair. But you don't, you don't do the... The like oh, the no. fall. The no, dip? no, because yeah, I would have uh, I would because I, I do that. I would Bad. put like something like the I would raise the armrests high enough oh. to where it would be almost where if I I could look like this and not necessarily look like yeah. I, I guess if you have a, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a full blown nap, but you just paint eyeballs on your <laughs> eyelids. <laughs> you go. The glasses with the yeah. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, no problem. I would literally have people. Say my name twice, and I would say, "Oh, I, I started have to put headphones in to make it like I was listening to the radio." Oh, right. Because it was like the radio days. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it wasn't like a. Yeah, you're just like listening. There's no like headphones in your phone. Radio. No, yeah, 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 seriously. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Howard Stern's on. Oh, yeah, I'm listening to something that I don't want the work to hear, and I would mm-hmm. put my headphones on. My, my my main slacker thing was probably the the um, fake shits, but uh, I was also just like a bad employee. Like I, like my. The longest job I ever worked, I worked for there for five years. I was at a call a call center well, for a health insurance company. Call centers are crazy. And it I, sh- my last year and a half there, I showed up late to work seventy five percent of the time, and not like five minutes late, like thirty, like half hour, yeah, hour, and just Nothing. like strolled in. Never fired you. They wouldn't fire me. I was trying so hard. And to the one point, like, I was cool with my boss. Yeah. And she, like, had to have the conversation with me of, like, hey, they're going to fight your unemployment if we fire you. Just so you know. I don't know what you're planning, but just so you know. And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, isn't it funny how you, we're so dumb, like uh, like working class dumb, where I've done that before, where you don't realize, like, oh, yeah, they have already, people have already been doing this. Oh, so yeah. So people already, yeah. I'm yeah. so transparent. And I think I'm being so slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in reality, I'm just a fucking moron. It's like, we've seen this game yeah, before. I, yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. so many dumb things where I thought I was being Mr. Fucking Slick Guy. And then uh. I eat shit. They, like, challenge unemployment. <laughs> you don't get it. I'm like, what the fuck? I got to go work and hold a sign at some guy's memorabilia. 
memorabilia shop for ten dollars an hour on the table because they deny my unemployment because I thought I was being slick and I fucking lost a court case. Fuck that shit. Sorry. How many Rick, times you had unemployment? How many times have you filed for unemployment? I don't. I don't not think many. I really had it like not once many, or but twice. I yeah. Think twice I've tried, and one of them challenged it. And ne- this California, this to me, fucked me over. This was brutal. So California said they had issued me three hundred dollars in whatever they in unemployment compensation that wasn't permitted. But they gave me the money, so how was it not permitted? So they were trying to get it back? Well, so this is what they did. This is the shady shit. So if you're out there, pay attention to this if you're a scumbag like I was. I they sent me so they said they had sent me some paperwork, but I had just moved to New York City. Yeah. Uh, from California. Mm-hmm. And I had to put my grandmother's address on file until I got situated out here. So it must have went there because the, a court of law approved this and said that it, it happened. So you had to give the money back? No. They didn't contact me. I didn't hear from them for seven years, right? That money had collected X amount of interest. Uh. And I got my... So I was supposed to get a bunch of money back from my tax return. And they must have known that eventually yep. they were going to get it lobbied for, a fe- for federal use to take that money. And I was supposed to get like 9000 back. And I got two thousand back. Yeah, and they're like, "Yeah, man, you owed us about seventy five hundred. Been there, yeah. dude. Fucking. Yeah. fucking been so there. I paid my fucking dues. You think I'm yeah. a thief? No, I'm an idiot. I've been, I've been taken advantage of. I well, got yeah. my ass handed That's to me. That's crazy. I only collected unemployment during COVID, and I remember they sent me a letter, kind of like, "Hey, we may have overpaid." I was like, "Suck my dick." Yeah. Fuck you. I'm, I, I'm done voting. I'm done with it all. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, like yeah, don't yeah. don't try to take that from me now. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You give it to like like if I accidentally paid the government extra money, they're not fucking no. giving no. it back. No, they're not. No. Yeah. They'll be like, now nah, you know we're, you're gonna owe us at some point. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get you on the back. They end. won't even credit you. No. You won't even get a credit. No. It's just nope. They're thieves. Yeah, they're yeah, the, yeah. They're the they mafia. They just take bro. it. They are the they are the mafia. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I, I, I had just, it. Oh, oh, yeah. I got fucking dude. I, I've until like the last like. Two years of my life, I don't think I ever made more than like thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year. And and I got fucking audited uh, in twenty seventeen. Really? See, isn't audited. that sick? I don't think anyone wow. on the books making less than forty five thousand a year should ever be audited. Leave me alone. Wow. I mean, it's going bad. <laughs> yeah. Like the fact that he's even putting money on the books, let's just applaud him for that. Because well, Holy shit. I was asking like a like a tax person about it. I was like like how do I make such little money and I got audited and you know other people are getting away with it. Don't aren't I like just such a small fish that they wouldn't even give a shit about? And they said, "No, you're actually I think likely when you don't make that much money because they know that you are won't hiding fight it. it. Oh, uh, right. They know that you don't have right. the means to fucking fight. Right, it. right, right. See, I have an accountant now. Me too. And uh, I don't. I, he thank God he just takes care of it. He just kind of takes care of the stuff. Like anytime I get a letter, I just send it to him, and he's like, "All right, cool." Yeah. And I'm like, "Wow," because I, mean, I worth didn't every fi- penny, Dude, worth every penny. Absolutely, one hundred percent is yeah, one hundred percent. Because I just, I just give my taxes to a bunch of Italians, and they yeah. figure it out. Handle it. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just everything's in an envelope. Seriously, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's friends of Brandon Trusso's family. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah, I didn't file my taxes for like. Uh, oh, hey, what's up? We got a little. We got a little friend. Mucci, little Mucci buddy. Go. Uh, I didn't file my taxes for like three years, like the late 90s. Fucking and, hilarious. <laughs> a little dog. A little, a little no, dog no, no. You're not, not filing filing my taxes. your taxes for three years. <laughs> I didn't file my taxes for like three well, years. Well, you were on crack for a lot of those years. Yeah, no, I was a crazy Is drug Is there any out. forgiveness for uh, being an addict? So, no. I'm looking at all angles. From God. something about Ray that makes me go like, I'm not playing all my angles. There's something about <laughs> a guy with a Pittsburgh kind of guy in here. <laughs> Makes me want to know what the yeah. fuck am I missing Ray's, out on? Ray's got an extra angle. Yeah, <laughs> that angle. But I didn't file my taxes for uh, all that time, and then I finally get like a decent job, that one good job that yeah. I had, and um, I go, and they're like, "Oh, we have this accountant we use. Yeah. You should go to this accountant." And he goes, "Dude, you haven't filed your tax." He's like, "What is this?" You- he had never account- he never come across someone like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, like, isn't that shocking? This is like a working class thing too. I like this. Is I remember like when I finally started making some money, like the kind of money where a normal person goes, oh, oh okay. Cool. But a guy like me is like, holy yeah. mother of a god, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. this! Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. and yeah. I had to learn how to do shit like that. Like, yeah. hold on, what are they talking about? Allowances? Like, I'm just. 
I was yeah. always doing it on the bullshit turbo tax. You're man. no longer a man with nothing to lose. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's, it, it was frightening. And then they look at you when you have to go to these professional people and you can feel it like how, and maybe it's my own insecurity in addition to what I'm feeling, but they give you that look like so, well this guy rude. this guy liked me he this guy oh. was like oh look yeah, at this like a lovable special this fucking yeah like he a called me a idiot. scofflaw he's like get in here you <laughs> fucking scofflaw like, he was like <laughs> tussled my hair you know <laughs> uh, sat on his lap he had, he had a, a lollipop <laughs> had a zoot suit on <laughs> <laughs> But then, so I file my taxes, and um, sure enough, my student loans caught up with me. I get a oh, call from yeah. the off from the HR department at this job, and she's like, "So, I, what's Sally May?" And I was like, "Fuck! Oh, I've been dodging my student yeah. loans. Like, I had totally gone like I had like credit cards I had just blown off, and, like student loans. I just went off the radar for like three years, and then if oh, so my dad, dude, everybody what? should get that though, like just a three year fuck off, just a fuck oh, yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, they should call it that, a yeah. three year yeah, FO. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was so long too that they were like, just pay us back. Like they stopped. There wasn't like with the government. Yeah, they didn't. They yeah. don't. They, with the student loans, they don't treat you like a criminal. Yeah, like right. Unemployment. They were like, oh yeah, we're gonna bury you. Yeah, we're gonna right. bury you like your Bernie fucking Madoff. Yeah, while yeah. you're eating canned soup on yeah. a Spanish Harlem fucking apartment floor when you first moved to New York, you fucking loser. Fucking Martha I can't Stewart. Send in Martha. That's like sending Martha Stewart to jail. Yeah, like, are you like, kidding me, dude? With, <laughs> with student loans, they've almost conceded how much of a scam it is. Yeah. So like, if you could just give us like five bucks a month. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, right? You're like, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah the guy's yeah, like yeah, wiping yeah. his brow. Like, it's like, yeah, the, it's like the worst like negotiation. Like, <laughs> you know, like the worst lawyer negotiation. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not. Well, how about $2? Will you the, give us $2? Do you, you babysit $2? kids? Can you do? What can you do? Paint houses? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> the, last, the last time I had to talk to a bill collector, it was, um, they were like asking me for some like crazy money. They were like, uh, they were like, okay, well, you owe seven grand. And I was like, no, I don't. And then they're like, they're like, you do. It was from tolls. Like I had an issue with Easy Pass, oh. and and it was um like I it, my Easy Pass was like turned off. It wasn't linked up to my bank account, and I went on a bunch of trips, and I didn't realize it wasn't working out. And then everything just compiled all this interest and fines and fees. And they were like, you owe seven thousand. I was like, nah, that's not gonna work. I was like, you're never, you're never gonna get that. And they're like, okay, uh, well, maybe you can get on a payment plan for like $300 a month. And I was like, uh, nah, car payment? Not gonna no. Work. They're like, how about $60 a month? I was like, how about you just call me back? I'm having a rough week. My dad died. I have diarrhea. And I just like went <laughs> off on like every problem that I've ever had. And I don't know where it came from. And they're like, oh, yeah, hey, hey, we'll call you back in two months. And I was like, all right. <laughs> That's great. What'd you end up doing? Never paying? That was two months ago. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Call will be coming soon. No. <laughs> my dad waiting. So my dad worked for the airline like on the like throwing bags and stuff when we got I did too. Really? Yeah. When he got really into drugs, uh he started doing this shit. This is the best fucking dirtbag move. When he was like starting to fuck up at work, like he was a pretty good worker, twenty years, you know, supervisor of the ramp, you know. Yeah. And when he started like doing his shit, he'd be up all night and wouldn't get to sleep. But his shift was like first flight shift. So he had to be there like 530 a.m. And this motherfucker like three or four times slept right through his shit. Yeah. I'm in the other room, you know, my last year of high school. So I'm getting up by the time he's supposed to be out of the house. And one time I hear this guy pick the phone. Like he's on the phone and he's like, hey, I'm going to be late. Uh yeah, I pulled over. I, I want to get some donuts. <laughs> he, that was how, like, where he was at in his addiction. Yeah. He was so desperate. It was like, I'm going to just say, but I'm picking also, donuts. He chose a bad excuse. Yeah, he's, he bought himself five minutes. <laughs> I mean, think of something else. Not even bought going himself. going to Tijuana to get, a, get some supplements. I don't know, something. Not even bought himself five minutes. Gave an excuse that nobody's going to accept. <laughs> yeah, man, that's... You gotta be at work. They also have donuts at the airport. They have a Dunkin' at most airports. He now has to stop for donuts. So they. <laughs> yeah, now, like, here's, and he's added a shit to his shit. Yo. <laughs> or he just get, or he just gets there and they think he's a slob. They're like, "Did you bring us donuts?" I fucking ate them all in the car. Yeah, seriously. So then, like after he started doing that, he just he had some back shit going on, but he just I, he just doubled down on it. Yeah, and took six months of whatever they would give him. Oh. And then 
he was like really at that point into the drugs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, once you get a pass like that it from a was, job, it so was he's like, getting like workers' comp. He didn't leave the couch. It's like, and yeah. It was like couch to the bathroom. Yeah. Ca- like in his bedroom. It like just, and then he got so deep for him that he tried to go back for like one day. And he came, he came back and he goes, I'm going to cash in my retirement. Because they give you at this yeah. particular yeah. airlines, I don't want to say it, gave him stock. Yeah, like a 401k kind of thing. And, but then. they also gave him stock in the in the airline and it was doing really well. Yeah. So he he says he's going to do this. He sits on it because he's too high. He doesn't like action it right yeah. away. 9-11 happens. <laughs> Fucking stock. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, no. So he's so... I think they forced his hand, too, because he was fucking up at work. Yeah. So then he... I thought you mean they forced his hand like Al-Qaeda. Well, I, <laughs> well you know, he had goodwill. See, that's the, <laughs> see, that's the thing, though, like, when you're, like, a working... He's, like, a working-class charming guy. And he when he yeah. wasn't fucked up on drugs... You know, people. He was likable, right? Everybody liked likable him. guy. But everybody sure. could see what's happening, and he helped a lot of guys yeah. out. He got people's mm-hmm. jobs. Like he, he mm-hmm. did some good stuff while he was there. So I think one of the guys making decisions who had moved up past him. Get, this is my take. Is what I've heard to pieces. He will never admit to any of this. But he, he uh, told my dad probably, hey, you know, you're you help me. Let me help you. If this isn't, good, we got to let you go. But I might be able to talk them into letting you resign. And cash out your shit as opposed ah. to get shit canned. Get oh, nothing. right, yeah. right, and right. Get, you know, right. so See, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah. my dad decided to go forward, even though the stock bounced and he must have spent a hundred thousand dollars in like four months and with nothing to show for it. Ooh, like just brutal. gambling, <sighs> giant Buca de Pepo bills. Like he would go to <laughs> Buca de Pepo, like the good fellows would go to that guy's bamboo lounge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like we would, he always would call me to meet him at Buca de Pepo. Like, dude, you're an actual, you're a dual citizen of Italy. Yeah. And you're, we're sitting at Buca de Pepo, like you're John Gotti. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> the guy uh, comes over for the tab. He's like, yeah, do this in front of my yeah. family. <laughs> Hey, box it up, box it up, will you? Thanks, Tommy. He knows the guy, just some white kid. He acts like he's some fucking real guinea from, from the old from the old country. So the so then he doesn't get a job ever again. He's only under table, like working under table for like twenty something years, uh, like car jobs that some guy will hire him because he'll live at the lot basically. Right, yeah. right. And then my grandparents die fairly recently, like three four years ago, and they sell the house, and he gets a cut, and he. Fucking torch through that money. Yeah. And Hell then, yeah. though, this is the part, the long way to what, what I'm talking about. The government, he, because he hadn't been paying taxes for so long. Oh, Because he, he was got, he got it in two, like, two payments he got his money. And in that second payment, <laughs> he probably thought he was going to be living large for yeah, another six months. Yeah. And he got the check. And I, I would have loved to see his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> I would I'd give anything right now to see his face. When he looked at that check and he saw what they took back, he didn't give me a cut of any of that money. He didn't give his grandson a cut of any of that money. He spent that all on his fucking drugs. I would have loved to see his face when he got that second fucking payment. So I, I would have laughed. For, I would probably had a beer with him after because I would have been so, yeah. felt so good. Yeah, right. I felt and like he got his. That was your inheritance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just laughing just at his face. Just I buy a beer. I was laughing his face. No, the the inheritance. That's some Blarney Stone. The inheritance would have been you to order two beers and you're gonna be like. Separate checks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man! I wish I could have done that. We'll now. do separate checks. Uh. This guy just got an inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece of shit that guy Dude, is! I hope he's listening to this. I, I remember <laughs> we, we we have. I, I feel like we have some similar wounds. <laughs> yeah, we do. And daddy issues. But I, I I just remember having a beer with my dad one time, and he uh, it's just like probably like seven years ago, and he had just moved back to Pittsburgh. He lived in Kentucky most of my life, and he's sitting next to me, and he's like he's drunk as shit. I had, I was driving, so I only had like three beers, and uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's Pittsburgh. Yeah, and, uh, and I feel like it was probably five. <laughs> and, uh, well, at that one place, it was three. <laughs> so. So we, we're, he like takes a sip of his beer and he goes, Ugh. he's trying to have like a moment with me. He goes, I know I wasn't a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, <clears throat> I know I wasn't a good dad. And I was like, 
Yeah, fucking and. Were you waiting for and me to list? interrupt you? He was waiting for like for me to like put my hand on his shoulder, like, no nah, man, you did your best, pops. We all are dealt a hand. And then <laughs> a and, second take. And I get, yeah, cleared throat second take. And then I gave him the fucking and. He's like, ah, eh, just you know, man, it's like yeah, things are hard. And like he like mumbled something else. I was like, man, you could have just said, but I love you and your brother. <laughs> I mean, that just end it. Perfect. Yeah, yeah tie, tie a bow on this. Get a nice closer. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. And they wonder why, dude. You end up doing stand up, <laughs> dude. I fucking uh, I worked on the ramp right before I moved to New York. That's my, a hard ass job. I've, I've talked about it on the show before. I, I I did a Father Sunday. It is brutal. One of my favorite jobs I've ever had. What year though? This was like uh, right before I moved to New York four years ago. There oh, was oh a, I'm talking like '90s. There was a, there <laughs> it was, was a brutal in the '90s uh, in Pittsburgh who was like a supervisor there, and he uh, hired a bunch of comics uh, and hired me like a year before I moved so I could like make some money. And I was definitely too old to be working that like. Like on that crew mm-hmm. because it was like you know it's all like young kids that want to get into aviation and that type of thing, and uh, dude, I worked that morning shift, and I would come there like still drunk from the night before, and this is what they don't tell you when you fly, is that the people that are like pushing the planes out and responsible for your luggage and responsible for wanding your plane out are all either eighteen years old or alcoholics <laughs> or terrible at their job. There was no vetting process. There was barely any training. Wow. I was the guy that pushed the planes out. Wow. And like, I fucking didn't know how to do it. It was just one day they were like, hey, Phil can't make it up to the ramp. Ray, can you hop in there and push out this fucking plane full of people? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll do it, you know? I mean, that's wild because they must, I mean, we're so litigious of a society. They, they must go, don't worry, we've created a system here where a fucking moron could do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, he could be half asleep and still be able to do this. But I guess the other thing, too, though, the Pittsburgh airport, is that an international airport? Yeah. Oh, it is an international airport. Oh, okay. So are you working on, like, uh, domestic flights or any, I was I was plane? working on domestic flights, but there were some times that we were able to work on international flights. You had to have a special, um, like, certification. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's, like, a next level. That's a next level up, right? I never yeah. wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yeah. more work. Yeah, of course. But it was still, you still entered the building the same way. Like, like I, like. What did you love this, about it, though? You said you loved it. What was great it was about it? It was so fun. It was so oh, easy. because so you shoot pressure. the shit a lot You down bullshit. There. You cut up. We're in the break room, like. 50% of the yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I was telling yeah, everyone yeah, on the air. Like, yeah, they just, great. my dad used to just that's drink great. coffee and look at girls out front with his buddies yeah. and smoke cigarettes and get until nice, the next flight. Get a nice tan working outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working outside. It was like mindless. You could focus on like doing comedy. Yeah. Because like you don't have anything else pulling away from that brain power. It was me and like four other comics that I was really oh, close that's with. Huge. Like, oh, that's like huge. my best friend, Colin Chamberlain, who I moved out here with. Yeah, right on. He worked there. We worked oh, cool. together. We would literally just be up in the like, up in the plane uh, cabin, like putting luggage in, like singing and cutting up, like <laughs> yeah. making fucking TikToks. Yeah, and um, man, it was just, I just had so much fun doing it. And also, there was no like it was almost like impossible to get fired. Yeah, I worked that five thirty shift. Yeah, I would get there at like seven, and you're, <laughs> I'd miss I'd miss like the whole first flight. Sometimes. And you could give shifts away where you don't even have to like you don't ever have to call in sick. All those dudes are looking to get the extra pay. Like there were there yeah. were guys who were in their forties, oh, right. like my dad, yeah. who were like had families to feed, and they would scoop the young dude, like some young dude, because you get the flying privileges. These young dudes want to go to fucking Cabo or something. Like, give me all your shifts, bro. I'll yeah. work a fucking double, yeah. and I'll only work three days this week, and I'll walk out with. Waiting tables is like that too. You can always unload shifts, yeah. Like especially unless it's like a Monday lunch, nobody yeah. wants. You know what I mean? But like unloading like a weekend like race, shift. Ray saying you would. So I'm gonna stand here from five thirty. To the last flight that pushes off, which is 10 p.m., and I'm gonna bullshit. I'm gonna drink coffee all day. So I'm gonna great. hang, and I'm gonna work. I'm probably gonna do eight, nine, ten flights, but I'm gonna work a total of two hours. Yes, and you'd be done. And I'm gonna be- make double time once I hit eight hours anyway. So working that early shift, you'd be done by like sometimes, like sometimes I'd be done by like noon. Yeah, I'd just go live my life. That's a great Perfect. working class job. Yeah, that's and you like get the that. flying privilege. Like my uncle, flying he, privilege is huge. My uncle had that, and then my aunt had the hotels locked. So literally, they could go anywhere for basically free. That's huge. Oh wow! So they they've traveled all over the world on a working class salary. They should be comics. I mean, that's a working class hack. That's I mean, yeah. it really is. Yeah, I I'm very like sentimental and like it's like one of the only things that I'm like passionate about when it comes to like politics or anything like that is like 
like working class and like like blue collar people mm-hmm. that just get shit on all the time. When you could find those little hacks like that, oh. it's fucking it's, beautiful. It's finally we get it's a, a little bit of a win. We get hammered on taxes. We pay for everybody's bullshit, the poor and the rich, and we're always getting shit on. But when we get shit like that, where there's yeah. like, but it's we work for the benefits. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, perk. Yeah. We work it's for the, the perk. Oh, it's, it's the still extra a ball stuff. Busting fucking yeah. job. It's a horrible job. Yeah, right. yeah, and the pay's not great or anything like that. But yeah. it is. It's all those. But you extra... feel like you got a little win. Yeah, like you feel like Absolutely. you tasted a little bit of that uh, yeah. that that milk and honey. Well, Finally, it's like, <laughs> well, it's like when I was a janitor at my high school. There was this old man. <laughs> <laughs> that time I was cleaning toilets for my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> the, the football team would come in, they would spit chew in the back. I'm like, come on. What the fuck? Jimmy, the quarterback, <laughs> this guy's tobacco is all over the bathroom, coach. <laughs> Dude, I used to get busted smoking cigarettes, and a disciplinarian would come in and go, McGowan, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, we'll just work this into maintenance. And I was like, oh. what does that mean? You're going to dock my hours instead of giving me detention? <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> that you're smoking in there and they're like, you're expelled. You're like, no, I'm a janitor right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a janitor yeah, cigarette. I'm a janitor. <laughs> Yeah, cl- <laughs> you're calling him by the first name when you're at the janitor. Cla- class, <laughs> class doesn't start. Class doesn't start for another hour, Janine. <laughs> I'm on the clock. All right. Uh, I'll show you two smoke breaks hey. you gave Phil last week. <laughs> two. <laughs> you want that trash can emptied? You better take it easy. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then she's Ms. like, oh. Mayo, hey, slow down." <laughs> then, then she's like, "Oh, uh, well, can, there's a toilet backed up in the women's room," and you're like, "It's me, Eddie, <laughs> the I gotta, student. I gotta get the homeroom. The student now. <laughs> I gotta get the homeroom." Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, what are you working on now? Like, what's tell us about the podcast? It said Trollmakers is doing great. What's, what's yeah, like man? The, the, new the shit? podcasts are fun. The the big project that I'm working on is a solo project. I just uh, I just filmed it. Um, I'm really excited about it. Got to see like some of the uh, some of the footage of it recently. Is uh, it's a uh, it's called Dive Bar All Star. So it's a stand up and to- storytelling show that I put together, compiled of stories about my dad. Oh, cool! And it's cool. It's, uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna come in at about like twenty five one man minutes. show or just a I, I kind of stand hate up the term one man yeah, show, yeah. but it, it's it is okay. similar to that. It's just it's just a lot like punchier, and it's not as like one through narrative. It's just a little bit like like vignette kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like bookended, and it's uh it's something I'm very proud of. I released it or I not released it. I recorded it um on the year anniversary of when my dad died okay so i just did it this past weekend yeah i saw pics and uh and it it went great in the room so uh venue looked great footage yeah man it's got that like loungy kind of like i love that and it's like a shit cd dive bar i love that back room so like i grew up like i mean if we're talking about like working i started working at like 10 years old in because my dad not only was the bar's best customer, he was also their like maintenance man. Yeah, he probably put that into his tab too. Yeah, oh for yeah. sure. He didn't make any money <laughs> ever. Yeah, they just worked know. it into maintenance. Yeah, seriously, so. <laughs> worked into maintenance. He 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 died. We got his Jeep and a Jimmy Buffett poster. But uh, it's a lot more than I'm getting, my friend. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, and, no, no, I'm fucking around. And a shitload of stories, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a lot of those too. Yeah, yeah. But he, um, yeah, man, the, um, the, the, we would be in the bar, and he was like, "Do you want to come with me today? I'll give you five bucks an hour to like sweep up after I do this job." Or like, so I would just do like little things like that, and then like I knew all the guys at the bar. I would sit at the bar. I would take shots of Pepsi with them while they were. Drinking shots. Uh, yeah, so you were C, yeah. like in Bronx Tale. I, I mean, I you were an honorary bar member. Yeah, for yeah, sure. you were honorary. You like their mascot. I do. Yeah. They they loved, they loved you. Like, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd sit, I'd sit up on the stool and, uh, but like I would start working. Like you know, I'd like learned how to like put down like, like like certain types of flooring and shit. I oh, wish wow. I remembered some of them. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, that's invaluable shit when you Real learn from those color. guys because they like we talk about this in the show all the time. It's one of those jobs that those guys were able to do, hungover. Are on four beers and do it so well that no one would ever challenge what they were doing. Those That's guys how- don't get enough credit. Like, like, like one of the jobs that I, another job that I worked the longest is every summer and like weekends. I worked with this, uh, with this uh, uh, Italian concrete guy, uh, oh. Frank Mariani, the fucking best. But he literally drank every night, up at six a.m., smoking a joint on his porch and just busting his ass. Seven days a week. Yeah, he worked every day. Yeah, wow. and that's why he got drunk every night. Yeah, people yeah, don't yeah. understand that. It's like 
those dudes drink not just because their fathers drink, but that was the only vacation. Yeah. I'm not condoning yeah. it because I have a lot of alcoholic tendencies, but there's a reason for dudes getting oh, fucking yeah. shit hammered. Dude, he would wear these uh, these cut off jean shorts <laughs> ah. with no underwear. Oh, under. I knew a guy like that, dude. And just balls sweating and his oh, balls are out. Always sometimes we balls. were working on like scaffolding because he did he did <laughs> he did masonry and carpentry. So right. You're looking right up and, old, <laughs> and and I just be like, God damn it, Frank, come on! <laughs> and, and, and and he's like, he's like, Wow, well, you stop looking gay, Ray. Stop looking gay, Ray. Hey, Ray, hey, hey, what's up, Ray? What's up, Ray? And then every time I, uh, like my alarm, uh, and uh, every time I got to work, this is that like blue collar shit too, man. Like every time I got there, like if I if my shift started at seven. With him, I'd get there at like you know, like seven or a little earlier. I was never late for that guy. Yeah, yeah. But he'd always be like, "Ray, you're late. You're late, Ray." And I was like, "No, dude, I'm not." You said seven. It's six forty-five. He's like, ah, "I don't know, man. I feel like you're late. I feel like you're late. <laughs> something that you know, it's something about you just getting on my nerves today, Ray. <laughs> something about you already. You're pissing me off." And he, and he would leave. This was the worst about just being a laborer is he would be like, all right, Ray, I'm going to need you to dig out the rest of this trench. I got to run and grab some supplies. Oh, and dude. then he'd come back just smelling like tree. Of yeah. course. He was out on was a like, break. You just had fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. love it. Picking up with somebody. They'll start something and like you have to. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. You yeah. Know? I'm just <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> so I'm supposed to be straight. God forbid the client comes out and asks me a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. I'm like, I'm 17. Yeah. Leave me alone. No uh, Ray's getting some underwear. Uh, he'll be back in a minute. Don't worry. You can handle him. Uh, <laughs> getting longer shorts. <laughs> Ray, plug where you're at. What do you yeah. got plug going on? Yeah. What do you got? Where, where can we Give find us your plugs. you? Yeah, you could find me at Ray Zawadney on uh, all social media. Um, check me out on YouTube, uh, Ray Zawadney. And uh, my podcasts on YouTube, Troublemakers and Brand New Jerks. Um, it's real easy to just go out there and subscribe to all of them. It's a fucking click of a button, you lazy fucking people. You would think it was easy, but we were really having a hard time with getting people to click on it. And but click, you need to do click it. Click on their shit, everybody. Like, yeah. Like, you, people don't realize how much that helps us out. Oh. Just one click. Subscribe. Uh. Just the one best, click. The best is when I get a text from somebody like, hey, that's real funny. I'm like, you could can you please put subscribe? it in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, I keep getting everyone telling me how like funny the, the clips are. Well, yeah. can you subscribe? Yeah. Put a like on there. We're I'm like, sick of going to these meetings with the podcast company. And they're like, so this is where you're at with subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, but like the clips are doing so well. People keep saying they're so funny. Commenting the fire emoji without liking yeah. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, that's where I'm at. Those are all the places you can find me. Uh, at Josh Accardo, joshaccardo.com. Edward? EdMcGowan.com, Edmcgowan Comedy. Email us. We got an email. We got an email last week. Send us some emails. We yes, love like them. I did for Laura last week, I will do for you. I will say the things to your boss via your email that you would like to say, but you cannot. You could just play it right to your boss. Yes. Oh, wow. WorkingClassComedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holds. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holds. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 